Welcome everyone. To kickstart our FinTech track, I'm delighted to be here with Mike Novogratz, the founder and CEO of Galaxy Digital. Michael was one of the earliest to recognize the potential in cryptocurrencies and has built Galaxy Digital into one of the world's most innovative companies in the digital asset, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology sector. Mike, thanks for your time. You were one of the world's most successful investors before investing in cryptocurrencies. And my understanding is you started uh, dabbling in Bitcoin in 2013. How, what was your investment case then and how has it evolved? When my buddy called me in 2013 and said, have you heard about Bitcoin? I was like, uh, no. And he said, can you look into it? And so I Googled it and I started reading about this cool technology uh, where you could have digital money. Uh, and it took me about two hours to realize you had all these communities that the story resonated with, right? We had had the financial crisis in 08, we had the financial crisis in Europe in 2012, and central banks were flooding the world with money, and not so dissimilar to now. And so the thought that we were gonna have hyperinflation, that you'd have this cool new digital hard asset that was peer to peer, that was kind of a middle finger to the system. And so I bought it originally as a speculative investment. Just thought, it's trading at 100, it'll go to 1,000. And as I dug in, I actually enjoyed the community more. I actually understood the technology better. Uh, macro guys have a skill. They don't have a lot of skills, but the one skill macro guys have is how do you take complicated things and make it simple? And my like great takeaway from Bitcoin was it was the first digital signature that you couldn't counterfeit. And that resonated with me and it resonated with other people. And so... Hence, I became a Bitcoin salesman. And 2018, you started Galaxy Digital. Can you take us through just the broad plan around Galaxy and what, what the original vision was and, and, and now what the priorities are? I left Fortress. I uh, started a family office. Family offices are great. Everyone comes to you and they're nice and they show you ideas. And I had another friend, Joe Lubin, who ran a, ran a company called Consensus. It was a theory of ecosystem company. And when I went to visit him, I was like, this is more than just Bitcoin. And this is really a revolution. And so I was shocked because I thought there'd be one or two people in the office. He had 25, 30 people. And the feeling was one of revolutionaries. We are going to disrupt the financial services industry. We're going to disrupt music. We're going to disrupt the arts. We're going to rebuild the world on blockchains. And I was like, eh? <laughs> and as I sat there, I said, I got to get be part of this spirit. And so I bought some Ethereum. It was at one. Thank goodness, maybe the greatest investment I ever made. 2016, 17 happened. I was more engaged in the community. Uh, kind of, again, this unofficial spokesman, having come from the traditional world and having been a macro investor. And this stuff is macro. It's as macro as you get, right? It's predicting trends, predicting the future, having a sense of momentum and liquidity. 17 was a crazy bubble. And I thought, I want to be more engaged. Uh, I didn't want to do a hedge fund since I'd already done a hedge fund in my life. Uh, and I didn't want the monthly mark to market stress. Um, and so either wisely or, or non-wisely, I said, let's, let's raise permanent capital because this is going to be around a long time. They allowed you to do that up in Canada in this thing called the Toronto Venture Exchange. Let's put some of our own assets in and build a business that would be a bridge between institutions and crypto. That would do the same thing I was kind of doing unofficially convincing people, educating people, bringing them into the tent. The real game changer was COVID. COVID accelerated everything. It accelerated it did the digitalization of everything, right? Think about, it. we never Zoomed before COVID and now all we do is Zoom. And so we were launched into the future in lots of ways. It also gave a perfect macro backdrop for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a hard asset. Uh, and so, you saw Bitcoin take off. We used to think of this as a survival business, and now it's a growth business. And so let's turn up the jets. Let's hire people, let's invest. Let's invest in the ecosystem, invest in people. And you know, I'm, I'm excited about the future. You know, The BitGo transaction, uh, I think, is gonna be transformative. We learned from a lot of customers that they wanted us to do custody. I had thought wrongly, you know, in most assets, you custody it somewhere else. You buy your bonds at Goldman Sachs, you custody a bank in New York. But in crypto, because it was so complex and so new, people wanted to go soup to nuts. Mm. So that was part one. Part two was 
they cover 400 accounts that we don't cover institutionally. And so you turbocharge your institutional account coverage. You cross sell stuff from our business, derivative product, structured product into their customer base and vice versa. But by far the biggest reason is, while I had traded on blockchains, invested on blockchains, participated in the ecosystem, I hadn't really built on blockchains. They have 60 engineers who will be able to build on the blockchains. Mm -hmm. And as we see decentralized finance, NFTs, this world explode on blockchains, we want to participate as well. Are there other segments that particularly excite you or with all your technologists you're, you're allocating resource to? The two spaces I'm most broadly interested in is the NFT space. Uh, I think people have no idea how big that can be. It can, if you're a brand, you're going to have a way to co communicate with your uh, clientele, you know, with your consumer. Uh, advertising is going to get shifted, right? You're going to advertise like these NFTs. People think of NFTs as collectibles. Yeah. That's a small part of it. You could have disposable NFTs. You got trade inable NFTs. You could fly an airplane over and drop over the city and drop down hundreds of Heineken beers that you can catch in your in your VR, you know, in your, in your phone, like kind of Pokemon Go, and take those beers and and bring them into a bar and convert them and they disappear. Like so, there's so many cool opportunities as we build out the metaverse. Uh, that's all going to be built on a blockchain. I tell people we're an ecosystem company. No one's thought, well, you're a finance company. What are you doing in that space? The ecosystem is how do you see the world evolving around blockchain-based stuff? Right. Because um, it's using the same rails, the same philosophy. It is this peer-to-peer -peer philosophy that is pulling people, especially Gen Z and millennials in. Mm. Right. This is a young person's revolution. Another peer-to-peer -peer, um, platform being social media. Um, I mean, do you wake up every morning just fearful of what's on, on, on Twitter? Uh, it seems to have so much good it can provide, including to, to the crypto and DeFi space in terms of increasing awareness, but also creates a lot of volatility. You can't be in crypto without being on Twitter. Like crypto lives on Twitter. It's interesting, the community lives on Twitter. Um, and so you have to participate. It's not all good. Uh, there's unbelievable knowledge that comes through all these mediums, right? If it's YouTube or Twitter or Reddit, um, you know, Medium, the, 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 the wealth of knowledge and, and education is there. And so that's the plus. The tribalism is dangerous and you see this vicious tribalism. And as much as I'm a proponent of the democratization of finance, we're in such early stages of it, you got a lot of knucklehead, knucklehead of finance out there as well. And so energy, it's obviously a topic that, that's getting a lot of coverage um, more broadly. Bitcoin is a, is a target because it so precisely measures exactly how much electricity you use. People are shocked when I tell them that YouTube uses 2.5% of all global electricity. Think what I just said. No one's boycotting YouTube. YouTube is an awesome, awesome uh, gift to humanity. We should bow at the at the, the altar of YouTube, you can learn anything on that thing. And so part of this is a PR game, but part of it is all industries have some obligation to look at the planet and say, how are we gonna green ourselves? Mm. Crypto uses 60% of green, you know, it's a green energy product in lots of ways. And so I think you're gonna, A, see a natural migration to green. You're also gonna see the industry come out with, um, statements and you know individual company statements and broader statements about how we're going to make this migration to yeah. be carbon neutral by 2040. Right. Um, it's you know useful things use electricity. Bitcoin is a really useful thing and so it's built, it's part of the system that the more successful it gets the more electricity it uses. Luckily it can mining can happen around green energy sources. Mm. And I think you're gonna see more and more of that. And you've spoken about digital gold and store of value. What do you think it will take to break through in terms of transactional utilization? I think transactions are gonna happen in stable coins. And stable coins are basically the dollar wrapped in a crypto, the euro wrapped in a crypto, the RMB wrapped in a crypto. Uh, that's where transactions are gonna happen. The regulators aren't gonna allow their currencies to just 
be dis disrupted. They'll allow banks to be disrupted, art to be disrupted, rent takers to be disrupted, but not sovereignty. And so they'll allow Bitcoin to be digital gold because gold in lots of ways is a hedge versus them doing a good job or a bad job. So Mike, on the balance sheet, you have a lot of digital assets. I think you're also investing in 16 venture investments. You're building these operating businesses as well. How, how do you think of how the business comes together and how you explain it to investors? We're living in a, an asset class where the, the main asset, Bitcoin, trades at about 80 of all. We have a big balance sheet, and so we're gonna have a lot of volatility around that part of our earnings. Uh, we're trying to build sustainable growing businesses in six or seven different areas, which will have more stable earnings over time. And so there will be a handoff over time uh, of st to, to stability from balance sheet. But right now we see it as an ecosystem. Um, and so we're gonna have more volatile earnings than a normal widget making company. We wouldn't be in this business if we didn't think the GDP of the space would be significantly bigger in two years, four years, and five years. But we're still early enough in this space that people should invest who believe in the space. Um, again, if, if the GDP of the space is a third as big in two years' time, both my employees, myself, and our investors are going to be like, yeah, wasn't a great idea. Uh, but I fundamentally believe we're headed in the other direction. Right. Mike, thanks so much for your time. It's Incredibly impressive how you've created this movement and you're, you're attracting people to the industry and we'll follow it with great interest. So thanks very much. Thanks so much. Can we shake hands? Yeah, we got it.